XETRA FM, Tijuana, Baja California, México. 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 We've just landed. Mr. President, distinguished delegates. Yalam Santata, a walking now. She's buying a stairway, a stairway. The 11th of January, 1983 AD. To heaven. As the final refrains of Stairway to Heaven fade into the ether, a brand new radio station is born at 91.1 FM in San Diego. Good evening! The station, 91X. Known as the Rock of the 80s, it was launched by the locally owned Noble Broadcasting Company under the direction of a lunatic named Rick Carroll. The architect behind K-Rock, Los Angeles. The first song played on 91X was Sex by Berlin. Soon after, 91X introduced San Diego to a myriad of artists ranging from Depeche Mode and Oingo Boingo to Elvis Costello and The Cure. Everything happens to me. 91X played everything from the Beatles to teenage enema nurses in bondage. It made no sense whatsoever. Regardless, within two months, 91X rose from a perennial also ran to one of the top rated stations in San Diego. A legend, as they say, was born. Before 1983 was over, 91X unveiled its graffiti-like logo, its oval-shaped bumper sticker, and its very first X-Fest concert. I Held in what was then known as Jack Murphy Stadium, the show featured the Ramones, Bow Wow Wow, the Stray Cats, the Flirts, Modern English, and was headlined by none other than Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Yeah, seriously. 1984. In 1984, 91X introduced the X Magazine, which featured up-close and personal interviews with the likes of Frankie Goes to Hollywood and the Thompson Twins. Relax. 91X also launched the 91X TV show, airing weekly on Channel 6, hosted by token English bloke Steve West. Meanwhile, at the Del Mar Fairgrounds, 91X celebrated its first anniversary with a concert featuring the English Beat and Wall of Voodoo. Then, as the year closed, 91X listeners chose General Public's Tenderness as the number one song of the year in the Top 91 Countdown. 1985. Lie, lie. At its state-of-the-art broadcasting site on a Tijuana hilltop, the 91X transmitter caught fire in 1985, and the station disappeared for 24 hours. Mass panic ensued. Well, okay, a little bit of panic ensued. And afterwards, 91X just continued to ride the wave, the new wave, of course. 1986 was the year of Oingo Boingo. Proving that the station was an entity unto itself, 91X latched onto a band that was barely known outside of Southern California and made them the biggest thing in the 91X universe. Don't run away, it's only me. Dead Man's Party was named the top song of the year, and the band headlined the only X Fest held south of the border. Dubbed Mexfest, thousands of 91X fans descended on the Agua Caliente racetrack in Tijuana to see Boingo, along with the Fix, the Bangles, Hoodoo Gurus, and Chris Isaac. 1987. 
That was somewhat of a foggy year. 1987. Must have been a really good year, if you know what I mean. Say what? 1988. But we do know that in 1988, the American sequel to X-Fest was held at Aztec Bowl, a 25,000-seat venue that has since turned into a massive parking structure on the campus of San Diego State. Headlining the show is New Order, along with John Lydon and Public Image Limited, the Sugar Cubes and hip-hop pioneers De La Soul. Also, in 1988, 91X dropped the Rock of the 80s slogan for a new one, the cutting edge of rock, and made for really catchy promos that went like this. The cutting edge of rock. Pretty cool, huh? 1989. In the summer of 1989, 91X again made the outside world scratch its collective head when it bought every ticket for the Who's Farewell Show at Jack Murphy Stadium. Serving as the concert's co-promoter, the station created special yellow and black tickets emblazoned with the 91X logo. It didn't really make a lot of sense. But it sure pissed KGB off. Senoras y senoras. 1990. Here we go! Yeah. 1990 had the dawning of a new decade and a new era for 91X. Yeah. After broadcasting from a studio overlooking a little village in Tijuana, the 91X DJs were moved to the San Diego headquarters of Noble Broadcasting. Although the actual transmitter tower remains in Tijuana to this day, the 91X studio now sits on American soil. Which means no more scorpions, stray dogs, or little kids selling gum showing up at the door. Nineteen ninety was also the year of X Fest three, starring the B fifty twos, Ziggy Marley, they might be giants, and the Cramps. Featuring Jane's Addiction along with Susie and the Banshees, Nine Inch Nails, and Ice T. Funny enough. This was also the second day on a fledgling tour that was also known elsewhere as Lollapalooza. 91X also hosted a contest called Expose the X, in which listeners were lured by a $25,000 prize to expose the 91X logo in the most creative manner possible. One runner-up managed to get actress Valerie Bertinelli to wear a 91X bumper sticker on her lapel when she hosted Saturday Night Live. The winner created a 60-second stop-motion animated commercial and bought airtime on local television stations. To close out 1991, 91X presented an end-of-the-year concert at the Del Mar Fairgrounds featuring Nirvana and the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and the show opened with a then-nothing little band called Pearl Jam. 1992. In 1992, 91X introduced the Save the World Radiothon. Over the course of one weekend, autographed items from every 91X artist were put up on the auction block live on the air. The annual event continued for the next four years, allowing 91X to raise more than $1 million dollars for the Rainforest Alliance, securing the permanent preservation of hundreds of acres of rainforest all over the world. 1992 also marked 91X's ninth anniversary, so a two-day listener appreciation show was held featuring Social Distortion, The Cult, Soup Dragons, Los Lobos, Pato Bantan, and The Catherine Wheel. Check, check, check. Check, check, The following year saw 91X take their X-Fest show directly to the beaches of Coronado on the 4th of July. Beach 
Fest, played host to Stone Temple Pilots, the Butthole Surfers, and Mike Watt, and was hosted by Johnny Rodden, dressed up like a redcoat. Later that summer, U2 Zoo TV tour hit the stadium, and the massive TV monitors behind the band featured footage of the marriage of two 91X listeners recorded earlier that day in the parking lot. The beat farmer's country Dick Montana served as their chaplain, and yeah, he was drunk. As the year ended, 91X hosted its first Acoustic Xmas show with unplugged performances from Porno for Pyros, General Public, The Wonder Stuff, and Live. I warned you. In 1994, sticking to its omnipresent fest theme, 91X invented Sunfest. It included Violent Femmes, Green Day, Rollins Band, James, Toad the Wet Sprocket, and more. 1994 was also the year of the X-Fest 5 with UB40, Tears for Fears, and Terrence Trent Darby. And yet another listener appreciation show, this time in the dank and dark of the sports arena with Living Color, Iggy Pop, Social D, and Big Country. The second acoustic Xmas show, meanwhile, included performances from Hole, The Black Crows, The Go-Go's, Simple Minds, Dinosaur Jr., and inexplicably, Tom Jones. 1995. In 1995, Howard Stern joined 91X for mornings, and it all somehow made sense. It's not unused, you ought to be loved by anyone. Everything seemed to be going just fine. Going just fine. Going just fine. And then... 1996. In January of 1996, 91X's owner, Noble Broadcasting, was swallowed up by another company called J-Core Communications. A few years later, J-Core was swallowed up by an even bigger company called Clear Channel. Clear Channel. Clear Channel. Clear Channel. Clear Channel. Channel, the world's largest radio company, took former control of 91X in May of 1999. Slowly but surely, the station began to make a lot of sense to old man wearing suits in San Antonio, Texas, and Covington, Kentucky. For San Diego? Not so much. The Dark Ages had begun. Next, in 2002, a new alternative station was launched at 94.9 by Jefferson Pilot, which, like Clear Channel, is a Fortune 500 company. Company. As a result, not only are they all about their music, they're all about individual and group life insurance policies, as well as annuity and investment products. Jefferson Pilot swiftly bought up Premium Radio 92.1 in order to simulcast their powerhouse country station into the North County. And then they stocked their new station at 94.9 with a program director from Detroit, a music director from Detroit, and a high-priced music and marketing consulting firm. From Detroit, 91X, meanwhile, continued to suck pretty hard. Until today. Until now. This is 91X, and as you just heard, we've been through a lot together, 91X in San Diego has. We were really close for a long time, but I guess like in every relationship, we hit a pretty big bump in the road. Now don't get me wrong, it wasn't you guys, it was all me. And I suppose I could blame Clear Channel, I could blame Limp Biscuit, I could blame Creed, I could blame FEMA, but it all really comes down to the fact that I just wasn't being myself. I wasn't being 91X. So. As we move forward now, I promise to make it up to you guys. I don't expect you to just take us back with open arms. We're gonna earn your trust again. We've got a new air staff. We've got a new commitment to new music. We've got a new commitment to San Diego. Because in the end, it's all about 91X and San Diego, right? San Diego and 91X, that's what I'm saying. It's all about us. All of us. You know what I mean? I think you do. All right, you ready? All right, here we go. Hi. 
Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, this is Terry Nunn from Berlin, and you're listening to 91X. Hi, this is Charlie from Garbage. Yes, this is Mark and the Bullies from Blink-182, and you're listening to 91X. Hey, this is Dave Matthews and 91X. All right, this is Billy Idol, and you're listening to 91X. This is Greg Graffin from Bad Religion. Yo, what's up? This is Mixed Master Mike. Hello, this is Josh from Hi, this is Josh from Hi, this Hello, this is Robert from The Cure, and you're listening to 91X. Cutting edge rock. Oh, Diego Cousin Sunday. Hey, this is Billy from Up Earth. Hi, this is Billy Joe Armstrong Joe from the Green Day Trio, Hi, and you are listening to 91. Hi, this is Glenn from No Doubt. What's up? This is Mark from Blink 182, and I'm Hi, this is from Nine Inch Nails. 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 You're listening to the station that lives on the cutting edge of rock, 91X. Hey, this is Eddie Vedder. I have to tell you, I never thought I'd be doing one of these. Not for 91X, which was and is my favorite station, but you're listening to the cutting edge of rock. In San Diego, 91X. Wow. Hi, this is Joey Ramone, and you're listening to 91X, the cutting edge of rock. <laughs> 